We already talked about a little bit, at least, about how Michigan matches up against Alabama when it comes to the statistics. But there's things that go beyond the statistics. What do the advanced analytics say? We're going to consult numerous different uh, ranking systems and such. And is Ohio State truly falling apart? Because it kind of feels like Ohio State's truly falling apart right now. We're going to get into all of that on this episode of Locked On Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines. Your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Thursday. We're back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group. On Monday, we last kind of got into the Jalen Milrow of it all. And I think today is a good day to kind of get into the other advanced rankings. How do they say who's better? Who's how do they match up? All that kind of stuff. Right. Um, I, I don't have this one readily available because it just came to top of mind here. Last possible second. But Parker Fleming, not to be confused with the Parker Fleming. Uh, that is uh, persona non grata coach at Ohio State. Uh, but uh, certainly the, the, the stats of war. Uh, that that Parker Fleming. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to pull this up very quickly here. Um, but he, he has Michigan winning uh, 29 to 10, I believe. Sorry, 20, not 10, 29 to 20. Uh, so let's see if we can. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to be able to pull this up very easily. Uh, that, sorry, that just came to mind. Uh, I like to be more prepared than that. Uh, we'll see if I can come that get to that here uh, eventually. Uh, but uh, he, he looked at it and said, this is certainly a uh, a game that Michigan should win. Kind of was like, hey, don't hit me <laughs> about it. But we're going to look at PFF. We're going to look at uh, FEI. We're going to look at uh, the two ESPN ones where they, where they sit. Obviously, all of these are different, right? Like you look at PFF, that's how they have played, how they have performed. You look at, um, you look at uh, SP+, Plus, that's going to be more predictive. Uh, FPI is also predictive, but it's been, I mean, FBI has been no one's favorite because I mean, Michigan was sixth, uh, coming into the season and anyone could have told you that they were probably going to be better than LSU. Right. Uh, so there's that. Um, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get this stats of war thing up at any, any time soon here. Doesn't look like I have it. Uh, doesn't look like I have it readily available as I had hoped. Uh, nonetheless, uh, it, it definitely looking at the fourth. Um, we'll, we'll get back to that because it just doesn't seem like. But again, twenty nine twenty is what the uh, the matchup appeared to be. Uh, again, Michigan favored there, um, and uh, it. We'll see if that if he kind of rehashes it, goes back into it. Let's start with PFF. How how have teams done here overall? So overall, when you look at the overall teams, according to performance. Michigan actually would have fared better against Georgia. Again, this is not predictive. This is just overall. Uh, but Michigan is the number one team in the country per overall rating by PFF. Now, remember, the, they loved them some Michigan. We had Max Chadwick on a long time ago, and he said that he had Michigan as his national champion. And, you know, 13-0, and 0, that seems like that would hold well. Uh, keep in mind, number three is Notre Dame, and they're 9-3, and three, so that it's not all about, you know, whatever. But Alabama is number two. So you're looking at a 95.5 rating versus 94.6. Uh, when you're comparing offenses, uh, I know people tend to nationally think, oh, Michigan's offense isn't whatever. Okay, they're 90.1. They're eighth in the country. Alabama is 11th, so not really much separation there. Uh, they're 89.1, so literally just one point behind Michigan as far as that's concerned. Obviously, well, I was going to say, obviously, passing-wise, that's a, that's not going to be as good, but Michigan's got an 86.2. They're 11th in the country. Alabama is 23rd at 81.2, so a full five points behind. Uh, in terms of blocking, pass blocking, uh, Michigan is not in the top 50. I'm not going to expand that because it's always annoying. Uh, as far as run, uh, running the football, uh, Michigan is also not in the top 50, believe it or not. Uh, run blocking, Michigan is 13th, Alabama is third. So offense is better overall, even though they are behind Alabama in, uh, in the, some of the blocking categories and such. Uh, defensively, uh, PFF has Michigan number one in the country yet again. Alabama is tied for two. 
uh, with Clemson, Penn State, uh, and they're all ahead of Ohio State. So Michigan's got 95.6. Alabama's at 93.8. Uh, run defense, Michigan is sixth. Alabama is seventh. Uh, tackling, Michigan is first. Alabama is ninth. Pass rush, Michigan is fifth. Uh, Alabama, with their amazing pass rushers, am I, are they not? Uh, hmm. We're going to find out, is Alabama not even, can I type? That's the question. Okay, no, Alabama's ninth. Sorry, I just didn't see them there. Uh, and then in coverage, Alabama is second to Michigan's first. So Michigan is ahead of them in all of those. Uh, could it come down to special teams? Uh, well, if it does, it's not going to bode wet that well because Alabama's third, Michigan's 22nd. So that's PFF and their overall ranking. Um, so I'm going to, I let's, let's discuss that for a second, just because it's, it's, again, this is teams that are so, so close to each other teams that are just, it, it, it it's it really could come into just which coaches make, have a better play sh plan, right? Like game plan, making the good game calls. Well, I can't speak play calls, <laughs> all of that kind of stuff. Um, and just the execution, and obviously you would think that Nick Saban has the advantage there, but maybe, you know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe this is finally, uh, it, it's, um, who was I watching that was saying about Michigan finally hitting in the, into that sweet spot? Uh, I can't remember who it was. Saying like, okay, you know, Michigan uh, played maybe a little too tight against Georgia, played a little too loose last year against uh, TCU, and now they're kind of in that sweet spot. I think that that, that certainly is what you hope at this point. Uh, but uh, I, I feel like Michigan's got just as much talent, maybe not in the recruiting rankings on paper, but certainly in guys who will be drafted. It's, it's probably relatively equal on a long enough timeline. Uh, Alabama's got younger players than Michigan, so that's part of that. Before we move on, let's go to the, the Fremo Index, uh, if it works. I had it pulled up. There we go. So there's a little bit more of a disparity on the FEI rankings. Uh, FEI's opponent-adjusted data representing the scoring advantage per possession a team would be expected to have on a neutral field against an average opponent. So in this, that Michigan's got a sizable advantage against Alabama. They're number one, and Alabama's number 11. Uh, Michigan's got an FEI rating of 1.45 to Alabama's 4, uh, 0.94. Uh, offensively, Michigan is the fifth-ranked uh, offense. Alabama is 21st. Defensively, Michigan's the fourth-ranked defense, uh, weirdly behind Ohio State, uh, not weirdly behind Penn State, and they're up against the number nine uh, defense. So an unadjusted, that's opponent-adjusted efficiency, okay? So that's a, adjusted for the opponent. Now, when it comes to adjusted efficiency, Michigan's still number one, and it's number one across the board. Number, number one overall, number one uh, defense, number one, all of that. Uh, strength of schedule is not favorable to Michigan, but that who cares, right? Like we're past all of that. So that's those. Let's get into the ESPN, uh, and then we're going to talk about Ohio State and uh, and all of that. Uh, before we get into uh, into that, before we even get into just the next thing, uh, again, I want to remind you of a uh, uh, colleague, not colleague, uh, acquaintance of mine, Sergio, who is asking for help for his sister's. Um, his sister's kidney uh, transplant. Uh, I, I have a QR code up if, I, if you're watching uh, to be able to donate on the GoFundMe. I'll put the link in the description as well uh, for the audio listeners. So please help if you can. So we're going to move on. Before we do that, when you are hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you've got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. It's super important to have people who can fill, fulfill your vision. It's the same thing as dipping into your own transfer portal, bringing in a Josiah Stewart or a AJ Barner, someone that's going to be able to come right in and help you right away. And that is crucial. LinkedIn is not just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network, a vast network, you know what those are, of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Uh, hiring is easy when you've got that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many ads and might not have the time or resources to hire. So thankfully, LinkedIn, the process with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. 
So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, continuing on in the advanced uh, analytics. I'm not the greatest about explaining what these all are, parsing it and all that kind of stuff, but <laughs> I can at least read it and tell you where everybody stands. Uh, SP Plus is a certainly S. Bill Connolly's uh, ordeal here. Uh, he's uh, thought to be uh, quite the guru. He's usually been pretty good. He's been long high on Michigan well before a lot. Well, you know, others were just kind of lagging behind. He has Michigan as the number one team overall. Again, voting very well for Michigan in uh, all of this. So Michigan's number one. Um, this is post week 13, so it doesn't have post week 14. It has Michigan at 12 and 0. So it does not account for Alabama having beaten Georgia, it looks like. Um, uh, so I guess that's just what it is. I would have thought that mm, maybe they didn't update their site. Let's double check that here momentarily uh, before we uh, before we get into all of it because just maybe may, I, I pulled it up via their rankings and not via the uh, Michigan team site. They might have just put it somewhere else. But um, all right, this isn't helping either. So um, all right, well we'll 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 maybe just have to go with that. So. Annoying, but it is what it is. Wait, SP Plus. Okay, after championship weekend. It just wasn't on their their site. Michigan's still the number one team in the country, regardless. Uh, they have the uh, number 10 offense. Well, let's get to that in a second. Michigan, number one team in the country. Alabama, number seven at 12-1. and one. Looking at a 32.1 ranking versus a 23.7. Again, this is predictive. Uh, SP plus is indeed intended to be predictive and forward facing. It is not a resume ranking that gives credit for big wins or particularly brave scheduling. No good predictive system is it's simply a measure of the most sustainable and predictable aspects of football. If you're all lucky or unimpressive in a win, your rating will probably fall. If you're strong and unlucky in a loss, it will probably rise. Michigan is number one. Georgia is number two. Ohio state's three. Penn state's four. Alabama's down at seven. Offensively, Michigan just slightly beats out Alabama with the number 10 offense versus their number 11 offense. So all things are relatively equal there, but uh, Michigan has the number one defense with a 7.4, which is astounding. Um, they have you know beaten out Iowa in that regard. Iowa had long been uh, a bit higher. Uh, it had you know had been the number one. They're the 36th ranked team now with the number two defense, but the 127th offense. Uh, Alabama comes in with the number nine defense, not too shabby, but certainly not number one. Special teams, Michigan is uh, a little bit behind. They're the fourth-ranked special teams in this, uh, to Alabama's number two. So, again, remember, uh, as Jim Harbaugh has often said, and I agree with him, the best your best bet in order to win a football game is to win two of the three phases, right? Uh, you, you, look at, uh, um, you look at some of the losses over the last couple of years. Uh, usually you see maybe one phase one, but, you know, the defense tends to falter or the offense falters and – or something like that, uh, it, or you see like a special bad special teams play, and then one or the other, right? Like you might see a really good defense. Like all of 2017 was really good defense, but really bad offense, and uh, that type of stuff, right? And some, sometimes it was a bad special teams play or something like that. Um, but you need two of the three phases. So that's SP plus. Uh, but then you get into the FPI, which again had Michigan at number six uh, to start out the year, behind Texas, behind uh, LSU, behind Alabama. Uh, Michigan's all the way up at number one. So Michigan's number one, just kind of across the board, advanced analytics wise, but, uh, Alabama is number five, uh, in terms of, uh, making the national championship game, Michigan does edge out Alabama 55.9% over 44.1 winning it. Michigan is the favorite according to FBI 36.2. Alabama is third, uh, at 26.8. Texas is 28.8, uh, behind that. So. Uh, Texas has the best opportunity to uh, to win the whole the whole thing, uh, but just because its path may be slightly easier if uh, you know Michigan has to go through Washington and or, sorry Texas has to go through Washington, Michigan has to go through Alabama. So um, that is where that stands. Um, I, 
So what what does that all that mean? Well, it, it means that Michigan is certainly poised, but now it's going to have to bring its A game. It's going to have to go to the Rose Bowl. Uh, I'm still kind of debating whether or not weather would be helpful or not because uh, Alabama has certainly given up uh, rushing yards to some teams, and some teams it just kind of clamps down. J.J. being able to run the ball would certainly help, but um, I think that the middle of the defense has certainly got some suspicion to it, suspect in all of that, but uh, that doesn't mean it hasn't been superior to other offensive lines at times. But Michigan certainly uh, has a benefit with – with what it has, even without Zach Center in the interior. So um, I'd like to see some off-guard runs if they do. Uh, and I know there's probably a lot of people out there that are saying, like, weather? What do you mean, weather? Well, if you've been to Southern California in December, January, it's not, it, like, don't don't bring a bathing suit. You're probably not going to get to use it. Uh, certainly, <laughs> it's bring a coat because, like, if it says high of 60 and you're from Michigan and you're like, oh, 60, that sounds wonderful. Let me put it this way. I would uh, get on a plane, you know, with the weather being like it is maybe a little bit colder than today, like a 35, 36 degrees and and uh, wearing uh, wearing just like a, a hoodie or something like that. Well, I don't have hoodies, but sweatshirt, sweater rather. And um, I would get on a plane and then I'd land in L.A., you know, with the it would be two hours later. I mean, five hours later for me, but time zone wise, two hours later. And uh and I would bust out the winter coat. It, it's, it feels a lot colder there when it's 60 degrees because it's a colder air coming in, whereas it's a warmer air warming us if we're like 35, 40 degrees at this time of year. Um, but uh, even last year when I went, you know, I went to Disneyland after, I mean, being in Arizona for a full week of rain, and I went to Disneyland, and it rained the entire time until I basically gave up on going on rides, and then it got to be nice and sunny. So it very well could be... Uh, inclement looking ahead to what the forecast says right now it says it's going to rain the day I arrive on the 26th and the next day and I haven't looked for the following day as of yet so it, the weather might not be super great so that could benefit Michigan but it also could benefit Alabama because Jalen Milrow may be a little bit more dangerous running the ball than JJ so we'll see all right let's get to the Ohio State stuff we're going to do that uh, for just a few moments uh, before uh, we even get to that, uh, I do the predict the the programming note here. So we took the last two days off in part because we've got work stuff going on on uh, Saturday and Sunday. So the goal is to make up for Tuesday and Wednesday on Saturday and Sunday. Okay, because we've got the uh, basketball on Saturday and then the award show on Sunday. So uh, we'll figure out how to kind of navigate all that. But uh, you know, take some time off where we can is kind of the plan and the goal here. Before we move on, as the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That is $150 if your team wins. That's all you have to do. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use with a wide range of betting options, which includes overs, unders, player props, spreads, all of that. Uh, you get paid instantly, which is absolutely amazing and highly recommended. You got Thursday night football today. You got bowl games coming up uh, as soon as Saturday. So get in and on the action. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and continue just absolutely dominating NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, we haven't really talked about Ohio State uh, in a while, and I think it's time that we do uh, because uh, you have uh, CBS Sports uh, having their winners and losers of the season. Top loser they have is Ryan Day. You can check that out on wolverineswire.com. We've got, uh, got an article up on that. It's in spot number one at the moment. So go check that out. But, uh, Obviously, the whole thing was like, you got to beat Michigan. And you see all of this hyping up Devin Brown and Kyle McCord, all these conspiracy theories. Like, dude lost one game as a starter. One. That's it. And But it's the one game you can't lose. And certainly, it didn't really feel like it. Well, I guess it was his fault. He threw two interceptions. But uh, we talked before about how when you go from Terrell Pryor to... Braxton Miller to JT Barrett to 
Dwayne Haskins to Justin Fields to C.J. Stroud, when you come and get a guy that's somewhere in the middle there, it's going to completely change a little bit of uh, what you expect from the quarterback position. So Kyle McCord is one of the 15 guys in the transfer portal for Ohio State, uh, which is hilarious <laughs> in so many ways. Um, and uh, it sounded like he was going to land at Nebraska, and now he's not, so there's that. Um, but, uh, whoops, I had to X on something and it completely changed everything for me here. Um, anyway, like I said, Ohio state's got a bunch of guys in the transfer portal. Um, okay. Now this is just being ridiculous here. 24-7 sports site is being ridiculous lately. 15 guys in the transfer portal. And that includes uh, the former, at one time, number one player in the country and Julian Fleming, um, you've Evan Pryor. Some of these guys aren't listed as, so this is the transfer portal rankings that we're looking at uh, here. Uh, Cal McCord being a five-star at one point. Um, you, you've just got so many... So many players that are, were thought to be, like, big time. Kyle McCord, Evan Pryor, Julian Fleming, Jair Brown. I mean, even a guy like Chip Traynham, who's uh, now committed to Kentucky. Uh, Evan Pryor committed to Cincinnati. Um, it, it, this is quite the exodus, right? And this is exactly how you break Ohio State in the sense of let, let them kind of implode a little bit with the idea of we can fix it through the portal. The recruiting is obviously great, but it has not necessarily a lot of these players, right? Like, think about if if they, instead of taking Evan Pryor, I mean, they took Evan Pryor before Travion Henderson, but they took him, and he very well could have, uh, they could have had Donovan Edwards, right? That, But they, they decided they were just going to try to load up, and it just didn't kind of work out that way. Uh, some of these guys are four stars in high school. Uh, but haven't necessarily produced that great Cam Martinez from Muskegon. Um, and, uh, but it's somewhere higher in transfer portal, Ch you know, Chip Tran, I'm being a four star for instance, but um, Amar Amari Abor is an edge rusher. That was uh, in his in, in second year, I believe that is in the transfer portal as well. It It's a lot of talent that is departing. And then when you add on to the fact that there's so many players that are uh, probably going to depart for the draft. Um, it's more, you know, we've heard kind of the fever dream, uh, and it's probably no different than the J.J. McCarthy fever dream, uh, that being able to keep him, although I think J.J. is more likely to stay, of course. I've been saying that all along. Uh, but uh, then, you know, Marvin Harrison, there's this, all that talk that Shannon Terry from On3 had disputed, saying, like, he's not getting $20 million in NIL deals, guys. He's just not. Um, and then you, you look at others like Emeka Buka and you're like, you, you know, you don't even know who your quarterback is going to be next year. Could it be Devin Brown? It's just funny that suddenly the guy who wasn't going to win the job and didn't win the job is suddenly worlds better than Kyle McCord. It's kind of the same kind of boat that Michigan fans were in for a long time, right? The Wilton Spate, John O'Corn stuff where it was like, okay, uh, if he was better then he would be starting, right? That's generally how that goes. So to get them to be reactive, it, it's because they're going to they're gonna feel like we're being proactive, but they're being reactive. But to get them to being reactive is exactly where you want to be because now you don't know that they have another worldly quarterback on their roster, right? They thought they were going to be bringing in Dylan Riola. They, they had Quinn Ewers on the roster. They don't have a guy right now. They're bringing in Aaron Noland. Could he end up being a dude? He certainly could be. But right now, they don't have that otherworldly quarterback. And it just feels like things are starting to fall apart there. And it is a wonderful, wonderful thing. That's really just the bulk of my thoughts on it at the moment. So we're just going to keep it that. And we're just going to move on. <laughs> I know. It's always a shorter segment three after a couple of days off. After my kind of made up weekend. Anyway, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We will be back uh, Friday. And like I said, we will go through the weekend and uh, we'll figure out how to 
maybe even do a Sunday show from the uh, from the award show. I'm not really sure how how or what we want to do there. Probably will end up being before, but we'll figure that out. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again soon. Peace.